But you see, you know now that that may have been the wrong thing to say, but you only know it because you did it. You couldn't have known that before. You really believed that he certainly wasn't going to do a thing like that. So then how do you get over the feelings that you carry around for so many years? By getting rid of the guilt. And guilt means two things, both of which are probably wrong in your case. One is I did the wrong thing, and you didn't do the wrong thing. You argued with him for eight hours or so, and you really were getting very frantic and upset, etc. So there's no evidence you did the wrong thing, and even if you did, you couldn't have predicted it at that time. You're non, not omnipotent, you can't tell in advance. So you're saying, one, I did the wrong thing, which is, as far as I can see, an error, and then two, I'm no good. I must not, should not do that wrong thing, and I'm no good for doing it, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose so, and I also feel guilty because somehow I feel I let him down. Well, but let's suppose the worst, as we do in rational emotive therapy, let's suppose we could prove that you did the wrong thing and let him down, which I don't think we ever will be able to prove, but let's suppose that that would be a mistake, a serious mistake on your part, but you're a fallible human who makes mistakes. And when you're guilty, you're saying, I must not make a serious mistake, I must not, and I'm no good for doing what I must not do. Isn't that so? I and guess if we, you put it in those terms, yeah, right. yeah that's, that's how I end the feeling. I, I know. I, I don't think I initially think of that, but yeah, eventually I turn it inward and I, right. I internalize it as it's all my fault. But uh, certainly he had his problems beforehand, and the mere fact that he threatened to do this showed that he had serious problems. So. To say it's all my fault is very, very wrong. Here again, Dr. Ellis is disputing the automatic thought or inference that Roseanne has made an error. RET would help people alleviate their guilt by getting them to challenge whether or not they made a mistake, getting them to see how the guilt may have negative consequences, and getting them to give up the self-condemnation. He's focusing on one of these at a time. But you see, we went through this with this marriage for about a year, and during right. that time, he entitled what he used to do to me the what if game. Right. What if I got hit by a car, would you still love me? Right. What if I lost my sight, would you still love right. me? Right. What if I quit my job, would you still love me? And what does all that show about him? Because that's diagnostic of him. It shows something important about him. What do you think it shows? Well, at this time and place today, I guess yeah. my own personal opinion is that he had a lot of unresolved issues from his past that he brought into the marriage, and he was completely insecure. That's exactly the right answer. He was a very insecure person because of his past, but also because of his nature. And his past affects you, but only when you are a certain way and are very affectable. So I would say he was born affectable, much more than the rest of us, and then he had a rotten past, which he probably did, and then he took that past much more seriously than the rest of us would have done, so he made himself very insecure. Here, Dr. Ellis helps Roseanne develop an alternative schema or construct to explain her husband's suicide. Notice how he's incorporating Kelly's personal construct theory by helping her develop this alternative schema. However, the personal schema is one that allows her to surrender her self-blame and self-condemnation.